Hello and welcome back to part six of my Workspace In-Depth feature series on Shortcut to Lot 4. This time around we're looking at the Properties panel. The Properties panel is over on the right and it pretty much does what it says. It's all about the different properties that you will set for different aspects of your design space or your, designing, um, or your design objects. The first tab that you've got available to you here is the Document panel. Here you'll set the size of your cutting mat and that will be reflected on the screen as well. So if I change that to the 12 by 24, you can see that now that's um, basically twice as long as it is tall. I can change to work in landscape mode if I would prefer to. And obviously, as I say, that's relevant when you're working with rectangles rather than with squares. Again, you've got the 8.5 by 11, the A3 and the A4. These are common size cutting mats for majority of um, cutting machines, but you've also got the option to set a custom size if you have something that's not within those parameters. Uh, the units of measurement can be changed from inches to millimeters or centimeters, and that obviously gives you the option to work in a format that you're used to and understand. We can choose to hide the grid if we want a nice um, clutter-free workspace to, to work in. Or we can keep that on and we can also change the number of grid lines that are available to us and also the number of um, subdivisions that there are available so we can get as many or as little of those going on as we want now these two options down here will only be relevant if i have a shape on screen so if i just quickly draw one in there and zoom into that selection what we'll see is, if we go back to the Documents panel, is that the Workspace Alpha changes the transparency of the objects that are on your mat. So we can have it 100% opaque or totally transparent. Uh, shortcut to that would be Show Outlines only as well, or we can sort of drop it down so that we don't have, we can still see the grid through it. Useful if you're going to align things in any particular way. I'll just restore those to their defaults delete my shape and get back to my normal view. The next one you almost had a preview of there and this is to do with the position and size of shapes. So again I'll get us a shape on screen and you can now see these are um, available to us. So we can see exactly where on screen our object is being placed. Currently, it's set to be relevant to the top left hand corner of our cutting mat. So X is across and Y is down. And at the moment, we can see that, that corner is exactly that distance in from the left and that distance down from the left. So we can nudge those to be, you know, wherever we want them to be. We can even change the um, orientation or handle of that alignment tool. So I'm aligning the shape to the exact position of that centre mark in this shape. Again, very, very useful and very, very flexible tool to have. Um, what you will notice, though, is if that you if you do zero and zero, so it's, you know, no inches from the left, either uh, down or across, then this centre point will be directly over the corner of your cutting mat. So if I do that for you and show you, that would be easier than telling you. Oops. You can see now that that's hovering over. And if I use that alpha, you can see now that that's hovering over the top left corner. If I go back to my documents properties and change that, I can now change that to zero there and zero there. And that's now put the top left corner of my shape in the top left corner of my cutting mat. So you can be extremely precise about where you're positioning things on the mat. You can align things in groups, but you can also now align things to the page. So if I wanted to position this thing right in the middle of my page, say, for example, I'm doing an aperture in a 12 by 12 page, I would make sure this is selected by ticking. And then I would use the horizontal and vertical centering on that. And this bases its um, alignment on the middle, the center point of the shape, rather than 
taking its instruction from up here. Now we can change obviously the dimensions of this shape, so if we put it on in a hurry and it's not exactly the shape that we wanted it to be, we can change it to be maybe a square. If we then go on to change it in the future, we can keep the proportions the same, and every time we change one of these dimensions, the other one will change to match. If we unlock that aspect ratio, we will make it more rectangle. And again, we can use those alignment tools to get it. Uh, we can rotate things at 45 degree increments, one way or t'other. And we can also flip and mirror this, probably more relevant when it comes to things like text or um, uneven shapes. So that was the position and size tab. The next up is the fill and stroke tab. So fill, we can have a color, a pattern like this, or a gradient like that. Now these are only relevant either on screen or if you're going to be printing this out as um, a JPEG or a bitmap. Now that will become useful if you're going to do um, printed and, and then cut toppers. So you can apply that pattern here, print it out and then cut it. So it's entirely up to you. On screen we can change the opacity, we can change the outline color as well from none to color to the pen color. So these will differ depending on what settings you've got. Um, we've got the opacity there and the width, so we can increase that. You can see it on the screen. I'll tell you what, let's bring that a bit closer. We're increasing that. We've currently got the corners set to beveled. That's this one here. We can use rounded or we can use squared off. So it's entirely up to you which one you want. Um, we can choose different end caps as well so that we can get different combinations of lines. We can do dashed in all sorts of different ways. We can change that dash as well. So that's really all about creating things for either printing or for reference on screen. Next up, we've got the style tab, and this is all about shadows and blackouts. You're probably used to these if you've created any offset tools in the past or offset lines. We can change these and these will give us the extra size that we need on those individual shapes. It's not a huge amount of difference here. Here you can choose how you want the shape to be handled when sent to the cutter. You can either cut it or draw it. You can print and cut or you can print and cut and print. You know, various combinations that are available to us. Next tab is the text tab and we can choose whether we show all of the text fonts, favorites or just things in this project. Uh, we can choose from the list of available fonts. We can add fonts to our favorites so that they will appear in our favorites list. We can do basic um, formatting, bold and italic. Alignment, we can go from left to center to right. And as I've shown you before in a previous video, we've got all of these different adjustment tools as well. Now the last two tabs are further down. And these are, first of all, layers. Layers are great if you are doing um, extra shapes and things that need to be on top of each other. So if I layer that on top of that, put in a new layer there, uh, layer another one on top of there. So each of these now has um, a layer in which it will sit. That means I can deselect things or, or make them disappear for a few minutes so I can lock them so that anything I do to the other two shapes will not, oops, will not make a difference. So if I move these across you can see that the one that was locked doesn't move, doesn't budge. So if you've created a design and you think yep that's the one for me we'll leave that as it is. We can give each name uh, layer a name so I'll call this one top rectangle. We can assign a color to it and we can show or lock it. Show or lock are these two here as well. So it's whether it's seen on screen, whether it's editable or not. And we can see our name there. So if we have a lot of things going on within one design, we can start organizing ourselves better. 
And the last thing is a little hint section. So every time we select a tool or do something in sc on screen, we've got lots of handy hints here that we can um, cycle through and work through and you know just generally help us to understand the tools that we've got available to us. Okay, so that pretty much rounds off our properties panel. Lots of things to get involved with there, but only really relevant as you're working in the software. Do join me in the next video where we'll be taking a look at the virtual mat and everything we can do in that area. For more hints, tips and tutorials, please subscribe to my YouTube channel or visit me on any of these social networking sites.